Right. So let me think about that. So dopamine is when people say dopamine, because you hear it all the time, right? Dopamine hits, dopamine hits, dopamine. Right. You hear about dopamine yep. or give it, you know, you're getting dopamine out of that. You're, so what is it? It's a, it's something that's in your body naturally. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So, and where is it hidden in your body behind your ears? Yeah, basically. Uh, so real quick lesson in dopamine. Dopamine's okay. a neurochemical. Some people call it neurotransmitter, neuromodulator. Let's just say it's a chemical. Okay. It, it's, it's a, a chemical. chemical. So it's a liquid. It, it's a, yeah, basically it's released from neurons. Neurons are nerve cells mm -hmm. and it's going to bind to the next, it's going to park in a parking spot. We call a receptor on the next nerve cell mm -hmm. and trigger the activity of that nerve cell. Nerve cells communicate through electricity and chemicals. The chemicals stimulate electricity. Okay. And neurons can make the next neuron more active. They can make the ne next neuron less active. Ooh. So this is important. In fact, a, a good kind of mechanical example is if you flex your bicep, mm -hmm. you are inhibiting, you are preventing the neurons that flex your tricep. They are antagonistic muscles. Got it. And as just kind of a parallel where we can get to, when you, for instance, smell something you like, mm -hmm. mm, it's what's called an appetitive response. It's kind of appetite. Mm -hmm. That inhibits the repulsion response. I when see. you smell vomit or something really putrid, yeah. you tend to retract and it tends to shut down at the same time the circuits that would bring you closer to something. So it's, it, you know, every right. circuit in the brain is like that. There's a push and a pull, an accelerator and a brake. And if it's you like, do one, it, it limits the other. Yeah. Think of it like a seesaw. One goes up, the other goes down. Got it. You know, everything from, if you step on a pin, you move your foot up and guess what, what happens? Your other leg automatically extends. Yeah. Okay. This is called the monosynaptic stretch reflex. Uh, if you touch a fish on the side, there's a big old neuron, giant neuron called the Maudner neuron. And what does the fish do? It heads in the opposite direction. This is just a, a you know, these circuits have been selected for because the dumb fish that went toward the thing that touched it probably got eaten. Ah. So all these responses are hardwired responses. This chemical dopamine exists in a couple different places in your brain. Mm -hmm. It has several roles. The most important ones to know about are that it's involved in generating movement. People with Parkinson's lose the neurons that create dopamine Okay. in an area called the substantia nigra. If you were to cut open a human brain, you'd see two dark areas at the bottom of the brain. And in Latin, nigra, dark, black, mm -hmm. is down at the bottom of the brain. Oh, yeah. And those are the neurons that degenerate. And there's a picture of it, but maybe we can find, it's really impressive. You can see even without a microscope, if you just say, um, I don't know if you said like actual brain tissue or something. Um, there you go. Look, so see that first, um, that first one, look at that. Mm -hmm. That's probably without any staining. You're just looking at the brain with no microscope. Mm -hmm. In Parkinson's, those degenerate. You can see it on the right. Mm. And what happens is when there's, so dopamine is critical for movement. And it's important to keep that in mind because the okay. other thing that dopamine does is it's involved in a, in a, a set of brain circuits that are involved in motivation. So if you think about any animal, human, dog, rat, cat, monkey, bat, that animal has three choices for movement. You okay. can move towards something, you can stay still, or you can move backward. Right. Dopamine is involved in motivation, not reward. So when you, like what's something that you really enjoy doing? Um, mm, making quesadillas? Making quesadillas. When you get the ingredients and you put them out, yeah. your dopamine yeah. is starting to rise. Yeah, I'm feeling okay, it. If you're, if you're somebody who likes gambling, it's on the way to Vegas. You're walking in, you're getting your chips, it's the feel of the chips, the yeah. dopamine's going up. Okay. This is a hardwired set of circuits that were designed to have us do things that were adaptive. So dopamine starts to rise in anticipation of food when we're hungry, okay. cold when we're hot, heat when we're cold, sex when we're horny. Right. Right. And it's going to be involved in anything that we think is going to bring a feeling or a resource. So a lot of dopamine is based on perception. Absolutely. You nailed it. Wow. In fact, in fact, whether or not we're talking about Bitcoin, U.S. dollars, mm -hmm. likes on Instagram or X, followers, views, or any of that, the currency is dopamine. Got it. There's one currency of motivation. So dopamine is about wanting and craving, not about having. Then 
something happens. You make the case. Okay, hold on. Let me slow down just real quick and just so that, because sometimes it's hard for me, so I know it might be hard for some of our listeners, but so the dopamine is is based on the motivation. So it's not about like the fact that when I'm sitting there and I'm making my quesadilla, like that's the, that's the dopamine is like knowing that I'm going to get the quesadilla soon. That's dopamine. But then when I actually get the quesadilla, what? Okay. So it depends on the quesadilla. Let's, let's go with three different scenarios. Okay. And we could change out quesadilla here for jackpot at the casino table, sex, winning a UFC fight Mm -hmm. or winning the bet on the UFC fight. Being nervous about asking a girl out and then actually doing it. Comedy when you move to crowd work and you're like, this feels like I'm out on a tightrope. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So any of those things, anything where there's a potential payoff, then something happens. Let's, let's use the quesadilla example because it's, it's straightforward. You you have the quesadilla Mm -hmm. and it's pretty good. Tastes like the quesadilla you usually make. Mm-hmm. Okay, what happens? Your dopamine starts dropping a little mm, bit. Yeah. Not a lot, but you're okay. Yeah, it, st- it starts dropping. Let's say, just by way of example, you eat four quesadillas. Each time, it's going to be a little bit less dopamine from the actual eating of the quesadilla. Yeah, the second quesadilla, yeah. you can barely even taste it sometimes. Yeah. Let's say you bite into the quesadilla and it's like, oh, this tastes weird. Like there's something off here. Dopamine plummets. So how much dopamine you get depends on the anticipation minus what you actually get, something called reward prediction error. But the language doesn't really matter. That's a bunch of nerd speak for when an experience is worse than you expected, your dopamine drops below where it started. Wow. When an experience is better than you expected, surprise, it's way above where you started. And it stays up there for a while. Hmm. So the dopamine system loves surprise. Now, all of this is related to learning. This is an ancient system designed for you to learn where are the payoffs? Where's the water? Where's the food? Where are the mates? Where's the money? Where's the resources? These are ancient circuits that we are doing non-ancient things with. And so, for instance, if you do tour, you do comedy tours, right? Mm -hmm. When you do your comedy tours and like you really nail it one night, like really nail it. It does two things. It raises your baseline level of dopamine. So the next time you go out, you have confidence, right? You're still feeling that. Ah. But it also raises the threshold for dopamine, right? Now it's harder to get dopamine. You can't have the same experiences that you had prior to that really killer night Mm -hmm. and get the same amount of dopamine that you used to. And when you think about dopamine, the most important thing to think about is how quickly does it go up how quickly and how far does it go down? Mm. Because every time it goes up, it goes down. Why? Because remember earlier we were saying everything is like a seesaw. If you feel motivated, there is, and this is so important for people to understand, especially people with compulsions, addictions, and this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. The better it feels, the lower you're going to feel afterwards, and the longer it will take you to get back to baseline. So the, the drug of all drugs for this to really nail home dopamine as a concept. Six. Or what? Food. Well, at behavioral, behaviorally, Plus, sex. You're you're right. Okay. So, and people have behavior addictions, process addictions. Methamphetamine. Yeah. If you were going to look at what creates the biggest rise in dopamine, the fastest. So it's oh, dopamine yeah. over time. Okay. Because listen, when you write jokes, or you know, when I'm you know reading papers, I love reading science papers. I'm like mining for papers. Every once in a while, I take a little break, and I'm super into cephalopods, octopuses. I'm building an octopus tank at home right now. Ooh. So that's kind of my my indulgence is is octopus. You know, it's a little bit of dopamine. Right. Methamphetamine is a huge rapid increase in dopamine. Then what happens? How much do we get off that? Bring it up real quick. Yeah. I just want to see what is so the. So it's it's. It's how fast it occurs. It, it occurs within minutes. This is why crack cocaine was so much more addictive than, in, than snorted cocaine, right? It was the speed at with, with which it hits the system. How much dopamine does an activity release? Yep. Baseline is 100%. Food is 150%. So an 50% increase. Mm-hmm. Video games, um, 175%. Sex, 200 I disagree with sex, by the way. I think it depends on, you know, if, it, if you're, and people should know this. If you live with somebody and mm-hmm. you guys are having sex a lot and you've known each other a long time, there's a lot of the reason why people are like looking for novelty in their relationship, et cetera. I'm not trying to be salacious here, but new sexual partner is probably about 400, 500%. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think most people would not dispute that. Cocaine goes to 450% amphetamine, 1000% methamphetamine, 1300%. That meth, that meth, that methyl group increases the speed 
that speed ah. increases dopamine. So it's almost yeah. the same. It could, it could potentially almost be kind of the same, but the speed at which it happens is so much greater That's that right. it intensifies it so much. That's right. And remember, the, the brain is thinking in terms of approach, pause, or retract. So when there's a ton of dopamine, listen, anyone on cocaine or methamphetamine, everything's a good idea to them. Oh, yeah, anything. Right. Oh, and God. then you think about cannabis. Cannabis has its own discussion, its own effects, but very different system mm -hmm. and tends to make people pretty happy with right where they are. The opioids tends to make people overly happy with right where they are. They tend to be amotivated, mm. not motivated. So dopamine in this context, what happens is then dopamine drops below baseline after a drug or porn or even, you know, somebody's, you know, let's say they make the huge mistake of like going outside their marriage to a prostitute or something. It's the anticipation, the fear, the excitement, boom, then it drops oh, below baseline. And now here's the real rub. In order to get back to baseline, most people, when they're in that trough, what do they do? They use more. But each time they use, while they're in that trough, when dopamine is low, this is the key thing, when dopamine is low, no matter how much you do of that substance, no matter how much you engage in that behavior, that dopamine is gonna have less and less of an effect and it's not even gonna get you above baseline. Wow. You have to wait. The period of abstinence is when these circuits return to normal. And with the exception of alcohol, where people can die from rapid withdrawal, this is why every addiction recovery program has a period of abstinence. They don't tell you to kind of taper off cocaine. Right. They're like, listen, this has got to stop. And then when people relapse, the problem is they get, you know, no pun intended, they get a bump, but that dopamine level is not where it used to be. And they're constantly quote unquote chasing the dragon or whatever you want to yeah. call it. So, you know, these dopamine circuits evolved for a good reason to drive us toward adaptive behaviors. But listen, I have friends in the tech sector, in the finance sector, you see this in the finance guys. It's oh. often finance guys, they're doing Adderall, they're day trading, they're night trading, you know, their friends are making a ton of money. And we also have the social comparison thing. So I'm not gonna say that social media hijacks all of this, mm -hmm. but let's just say, and I, I love social media. I'm on Instagram and X. I teach there. I learn there. Love your content. Love Segura's content. Rogan. You know, I'm learning there. Tim Dillon, right? Like I'm, so, I love it. Yeah. But there are elements of this where if you find yourself on social media, but mm -hmm. you're kind of like, what am I doing here? Mm -hmm. Like, this is like, nothing's happening here. You are in a dopamine trough. You're in a trough. So we've already it, gotten your high. You've gotten it. And we hear it, dopamine hits. If it were really dopamine hits, you'd be going, whoa, yeah, amazing. Cool. Right. No. That happens now and again, but what's happening is the threshold for what really draws you in is getting higher and higher. Which goes to show why when it comes sometimes to like sex addiction and pornography addiction, that people's, what the, the kink that they need or the thing they need to see gets more out there because so, they have to, just to even get back to the baseline, they have to, uh, they, they've got to find more. They need a h higher arc. Definitely. Um, I had a couple questions, sorry. No, no. And save they, where you're at. Can you, can you distill dopamine? Like, is there, is it manufacturable dopamine? There are things, yes. So there are things that are precursors to dopamine mm -hmm. and things that stimulate the release of dopamine. So uh, things that stimulate the release of dopamine, the amino acid L-tyrosine. Okay. It's found in hard cheeses like Parmesan cheese, believe mm -hmm. it or not. Uh, some people I think they're that. a little bit addicted to cheese in some ways. Oh, they do? Um, some people think that. Yeah. It's a, uh, L-tyrosine is a supplement as well. Ooh, L-tyrosine. Um, he sounds like he's from Rome, huh? There's a, <laughs> there's a very interesting um, hairy little bean. No joke. This is a hairy little bean called Macuna purines. <laughs> he's going to say Ma something Macuna else. purines. Macuna purines? It, Macuna purines. This is a velvety bean. If you just put velvet bean L-dopa. It is 99% L-DOPA, which is the precursor. Ooh. It gets converted to dopamine. I'll take L8 ball of it. You remember that movie Awakenings where people were frozen? Yes. They, With they, Robert De Niro. That's right. And Robin Williams. Yes, and, Robin Williams. And they gave those patients. It was a true story. It's based on a story by the neurologist writer Oliver Sacks. And they gave those people L-DOPA. <gasps> that velvety little bean mm -hmm. is L-DOPA. So you say, can you manufacture it? You can take the thing that is the precursor. Now, if you do that, mm -hmm. you'll feel dop dopaminergic as neuroscientists say. You'll be like 
buzzed. You right. Be, uh, energized. Like Shakira. <laughs> yeah. uh, absolutely. And then, but yeah, and, then and then you'll feel the drop. So, and then, so, feel that. and then methamphetamine stimulates the release, as we saw. Cocaine stimulates the release behaviors. Listen, I don't want to demonize dopamine. No, not at all. Dopamine is. You know, I'm sure I had a surge of dopamine walking in here today. I'm a fan of your show. I had a surge yeah. of dopamine when I saw you. I was excited, nervous about it, and then it happened. So here, and and hopefully I will. Uh, the reward prediction error won't be less than you anticipated. That's <laughs> no. my goal. So, it's already fascinating. So, so I think that you know, can you manufacture it? Well, there are things that can stimulate its release. Now, what's beautiful, what's really beautiful, is when. I usually, I think usually it happens when you're a teen. For me, it was 19 when I discovered biology, mm -hmm. you know, wasn't good at skateboarding, wasn't bad, but you know, I liked running and working out, but I never thought about becoming a professional athlete. And then I discovered learning and biology. And I thought, wow, this is something that I'm highly motivated to do. Mm -hmm. I didn't really understand dopamine then. We didn't know that much about it, but I'm motivated to do it. So there's dopamine from doing it. It brings me resources at first degrees and knowledge later you know, the ability to buy a house, right? Um, so much of my life is built around the work that I did, like a maniac, really, between the age of 19 and I'm 49 now, just working nonstop. And so there's functional dopamine. And pretty soon you start weaving it in, like, oh, I can also rest and have some recreation. And that's giving me dopamine. And so our lives are built around mm. this molecule we call dopamine. And so the ways that you can manage it, almost orchestrate dopamine to use it to your advantage, it's, it's very that's usable. Right. I think the thing to remember the following, dopamine is not about the pursuit of pleasure. It's about the pleasure of pursuit. It's about motivation. The other thing to remember about dopamine is it can, if it's increased very dramatically and very fast, it can drive addiction. And I define addiction as a progressive narrowing of the things that bring you pleasure. Mm. A great life is where many, many things bring you pleasure. Yeah. And then the perhaps the most important thing for people, especially if they're concerned about porn, gambling, internet use, or whatever, even if they're not a full-blown addict, they're just kind of feeling like a slave to everything going on, That you know, just everything, highly processed foods, all of that, is that any high amount of dopamine that comes to you without effort before it will eventually destroy you. Wow. Or bring you close to destruction. So something that just feels so good that you that all you had to do was open a package. All you had to do was take a pill. Or open a website. Or open a website. That is the slippery slope. Mm. And if we think more in terms of, you know. Yeah, Pandora's box doesn't yeah. really have a key on it, huh? Yeah, like I'd, I, listen, I'm not a huge UFC fan, but I'd, I've been to a few fights and it's fun. And I see you guys down there in the front row and this kind of thing. Look, someday I imagine, given my friend set and given my interests, maybe I'll just buy a ticket and it'd be a great thrill, right? But if I were a kid and I suddenly were just planted there every single night, guess what? You move one row back, it's gonna feel like bad seating. Mm. You know, and it's this is why the children of very wealthy people, unless your father is like a Warren Buffett who insists that you actually work and this kind of thing, yeah. the children of very wealthy people often destroy their lives. You know, they destroy their lives because they haven't had to work to have all this stuff. And there's this huge cushion below them. In fact, my graduate advisor. Yeah, they're wants, almost swimming in dope and they're almost in the hot tub, but they've never been in the pool. And then they're, exactly. And then they're, and then they're down below baseline. And then it takes more and more and more. That, you know, that show. So is well, that genetic then? Sorry to interrupt you, but is that genetic? The, your baseline level for uh, dopamine, is that genetic? No, this is all so it's behaviorally all driven. 